In this video, I'm going to discuss the definition of vertical and horizontal asymptotes and share with you a strategy to easily find these asymptotes. Let's get started. The line x equals a is a vertical asymptote of this function y equal to f of x if at least one of the following is true. y approaches infinity as x approaches a from the left. So when we approach a from the left, the y values or the function values increase without bound. The second case, as x approaches a from the right, so as we approach a from the right, the y values or the function values are increasing without bound. So they are going up indefinitely. Or as x approaches a from the left, the y values approaches negative infinity. So this means that the function values decrease without bound. Or as x approaches a from the right, the function values decrease without bound. That means the y values approaches negative infinity. So as long as we satisfy at least one of these cases, we can conclude that the line x equals a, this vertical line, is a vertical asymptote of the function y equal to f of x. Now for horizontal asymptote, we say that this horizontal line, y equals b, so y is constant, y equals b, is a horizontal asymptote of the function y equal to f of x if at least one of the following is true. As x goes to infinity, as we move further to the right, the function values or the y coordinates of our points are getting closer and closer to b. So as we look at these points here, the points are getting closer and closer to the line y equals b. Or as x approaches negative infinity, so as we move further to the left, then the y values or the function values are getting closer and closer to b. And as we can see from here, as we move further to the left, the y coordinates of the points are getting closer and closer to b, which means that the points are getting closer and closer to the line y equals b. Note that in this condition, we also assume that the function values are not equal to b when x is sufficiently large. We don't want a function to be something like this. It will reach this one and then it becomes constant. Because if this is the case, then we cannot conclude that y equals b is a horizontal asymptote. Take note, if you have the constant function, y equals b. So even if as x approaches infinity, y approaches b in this case, we cannot say that y equals b is a horizontal asymptote of this horizontal line. So a line does not have a horizontal asymptote. Similarly, we also assume in this condition that the y values are not equal to b for sufficiently large negative x. Now, let us discuss a shortcut in finding these asymptotes for any given rational function. So if you have a rational function, f of x, so again, a rational function is a ratio of two polynomials, p of x and q of x, and let's say that our p of x is this polynomial, and our q of x is this uh, polynomial here, where, of course, the leading coefficients are not equal to zero. And here, we assume that the numerator and denominator have no common factors. So if there are common factors, then cancel them first. So simplify the rational expression. So how do we find the vertical asymptotes? The vertical asymptotes are the lines x equals a, where q of a is equal to zero. This means that a is a zero of this polynomial q of x. So if we're looking for vertical asymptotes of a function, if we know already that there are no common factors between numerator and denominator, all we need to do is find the values of x that will make the denominator zero. So if a makes the denominator zero, we are sure that the vertical line x equals a is a vertical asymptote of f. Now, how about horizontal asymptotes? For horizontal asymptotes, we look at the leading terms of the two polynomials, p of x and q of x. These are the leading terms, the terms with the highest power of x. If the highest power of x in the numerator, which is n, is less than the highest power of x in the denominator, which is m, then we conclude that the x-axis, or the line y equals 0, is a horizontal asymptote of f. 
Note that uh, n is also called here the degree of the polynomial p, and then m is also called the degree of the polynomial q. Now, what if the degrees of the polynomials p and q are equal? So that is when n is equal to m. In this case, our horizontal asymptote is the line y equal to a n over b sub m, which is actually the ratio of the leading coefficients of our two polynomials. So a sub n here is the constant coefficient of x raised to n, and b sub m is the constant coefficient of uh, x to the m. Now, what if the degree of uh, p is larger than the degree of uh, q? In this case, we don't have a horizontal asymptote. Let's have some examples. Okay, let's uh, find all horizontal and vertical asymptotes if there are any. So let's consider this uh, function here. Again, it's a good practice to first factor the numerator and denominator to make sure that we don't have common factors between the numerator and denominator and then so that we can easily find the zeros of our denominator. So we cannot factor the numerator further. So we just write it down as 4x squared plus 5. But the denominator is a trinomial and it can be factored to 2x and then we have here x. And then look at the factors of negative 3. And uh, this is uh, minus a 3 and then plus 1. And we could check here that the sum of the smiles, okay, which is negative 6x and then plus x is equal to our middle term, which is uh, negative 5x. So that's the correct factorization. So it's clear that we don't have a common factor between the numerator and denominator. And from our strategy, so what are the vertical asymptotes of this uh, function f? So the vertical asymptotes are the lines x equals a, where a is a zero of this denominator here. So when is the denominator equal to zero? It is equal to zero when one of the factors is zero. So that is when 2x plus 1 is equal to zero or when x minus a 3 is equal to zero. This will give us 2x equals negative 1 and then x equal to negative 1 half. And then this second equation will give us x equal to 3. So note that these values are the values of a. And these numbers will make the denominator equal to 0. So therefore, these two vertical lines are horizontal asymptotes of the graph of f. Now, does f have a horizontal asymptote? So to find horizontal asymptote, we look at the degree of the highest degree terms in the numerator and in the denominator. So in this case, the value of our n is equal to 2 and the value of m is also equal to 2. So in this case, we have n is equal to 2 and then which is equal to m. It's the highest power of uh, x in the numerator, so that is n, and m is the highest power of x in the denominator. So since they are equal, then the horizontal asymptote is just the horizontal line y equal to the coefficient of these leading terms or highest degree terms. And in this case, it is equal to 4 over 2, which is equal to 2. So therefore, we have a horizontal asymptote and that horizontal asymptote is this line, y equal to 2. Next problem. So we have here g of x, which is equal to x squared minus 4 all over x cubed plus uh, x squared minus 2x. Again, we first factor out the numerator and denominator, and we'll get here, factoring difference of two squares in the numerator, we'll get x minus 2 times uh, x plus 2. And then over, factoring the GCF x in the denominator, we'll get here x times uh, x squared, and then plus x minus 2. Now, we can still uh, factor this uh, trinomial here, x squared plus uh, x minus 2. So the factors of that uh, trinomial is we have uh, x times uh, x plus 2 and then times x minus 1. As you can see, we see here common factor between the numerator and the denominator. So we have to cancel that common factor first. Cancel, cancel. And we'll have here an expression which is x minus 2 over x times uh, x minus 1. Of course, this uh, x plus 2 over x plus 2 is equal to 1, provided that 
x is not equal to negative 2. Let's now find the uh, vertical asymptotes. So here we have to look at the simplified expression of our rational function. And again, how do we find the vertical asymptotes? They are the vertical lines x equals a, where a is a zero of the denominator. So we only need to find the zeros of the denominator here. And what are the zeros? So again, we equate each factor to zero. x equals zero or x minus one equals zero, which implies uh, that x equals one. So therefore, we have uh, two vertical asymptotes and these are x equals zero and x equals one. Now, how about horizontal asymptotes? So for horizontal asymptote, we can also look at the simplified expression. So let me write this down as x minus two over x squared minus x. When you're looking for horizontal asymptotes, you may consider this one or the original expression. Okay, but let's just look at this simplified expression here. Considering this expression, we'll get here a value of n, the highest power of x in the numerator is equal to one, and the value of m, which is the highest power of x in the denominator, which is equal to two. So since n is less than m, we conclude that the horizontal asymptote is the x-axis, whose equation is y equal to zero. So therefore, this is the horizontal asymptote of G. Let's move to our last problem. So let's find the horizontal and vertical asymptotes of this function h of x here. So again, let's factor out the numerator and denominator. So we'll get here x squared times 4 minus 7x. And then the denominator can be factored to... So we have here, so the middle term is negative 5x, so I think this will work. 6x and then x, and then you have the minus 1 and then plus 1. So if you look at the sum of the smiles, negative 6x plus x, it is equal to your middle term, negative 5x. So it's clear that that is the factorization of the denominator. So we don't have a common factor between the numerator and denominator, so we can proceed using our strategy. So what are the vertical asymptotes of this function h? Again, we just have to find the zeros of this denominator. So the denominator is zero when six x plus one is zero or when x minus one is zero. So that is six x equals negative one, which gives x equal to negative one over six. And then this second equation will give us x equals one. So we have here two vertical asymptotes x equals negative 1 over 6, and x equals positive 1. Now, how about horizontal asymptotes? So if you look at the degree of the numerator, the value of n, the highest power of x is 3. So therefore, the value of n is a 3. How about m, which is the degree of the denominator? The highest power of x in the denominator is 2. So therefore, the value of m here is equal to 2. Because the degree of the numerator n is larger than the degree of the denominator m, we conclude that there is no horizontal asymptote. So this function h here only has vertical asymptotes, and it has no horizontal asymptotes.